how does the future of men's and women's soccer look in the U S and in your opinion, because the men are sort of playing catch up to other countries in, in men's soccer, but in women's soccer, other countries are attempting to meet the standard that's now been set by the U S are, are those arcs going to shift or are they already shifting? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, the women's game is growing exponentially around the world. Uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Like when I started on the national team in the early two thousands, I mean, even in Germany, which was a, one of the powerhouses. I mean, these women are like working through the day and then they would like train with Frankfurt in the evening and they were still one of the best national teams in the world. So you can imagine that like now you pump some resources into these women, into the clubs, you know, you have like Barcelona and Wolfsburg and Lyon and PSG and Arsenal, I, my former club and Manchester city, all these, these clubs that, you know, are paying the women now they are professional athletes so they can focus on their craft they're surrounded by sports scientists and doctors so there's just more resources to go around and so you know clearly that's going to translate to international play as well and so where the u.s had a leg up always because essentially of title nine from the 70s um, which you know allowed essentially a, a huge blanketed training ground for athletes, you know, 19 year old women, 20 year old women, 21 year old women to, you know, essentially go to college and get their, you know, their training paid for. They didn't have to do anything except be a student and train. And so this wasn't happening in other parts of the world. Um, so from the very beginning, from like the seventies, then all of a sudden you had, you had, women that were like great athletes and Anson Dorrance gets a hold of those athletes in 91 and it wins the first women's world cup. And as they say, winning breeds winning, right? So you win the first 91 world cup, then you're, then you're kind of known as a, as a leader. You have all these athletes coming through college. And so the pipeline just was like brewing. Right. And, you know, they were looking over in Europe, which are soccer countries. America is not yet a soccer nation, you know, it sits, soccer sits, I think the fourth most popular sport. So you have these European countries like looking over so enviously, it's like one, they have the population to do it Two, They have just this societal acceptance that girls can be athletes, women can be athletes. And so they were envious, I think. And now, you know, into, into the two thousands and, and, and then present day. Now, finally, these soccer countries are getting women paid. And so those two things are, you know, now elevating the game worldwide. And yes, they are, they are coming for us. You know, I think that the U S women's national team will always have a little bit of an edge with just like this crazy competitiveness, never say die attitude. We've seen it with the U S national team time and time again, you can't shut off your TV with a few minutes left that the U S is losing. Even if they're losing like three nil, you can't shut off your television because there's a chance that they're going to fight back and come back. Right. We've seen it. We've seen it so many times. So, uh, they still have a bit of an edge, but the rest of the world is certainly catching up, especially like the middle tier. Now you have a team like Portugal, for instance, that we're playing third in the group, you know, 10 years ago, you'd be like, Oh gosh, that's a five nil result. Now I'm kind of like, I'm a little worried about Portugal because Benfica is a pretty good Champions League club team. And these women play with each other all the time. All of a sudden, I'm worried about Portugal. And you have, you, you know, you're, you're Sweden, you're Germany, you're Spain, you're France, England that could like potentially win the thing. So certainly on the women's side, they are catching up. On the men's side, um, you know, I think that it was an interesting time for our men's national team with the coaching change. Now Greg Berhalter's back which I'm thrilled about. I think he's a, a great coach. I think, you know, for us to be hosting 2026 is going to be massive for our country. I'm so excited about it. Um, and I think that they could be, you know, I, I think that they should have their sights on like quarterfinals. If they're not in the quarterfinals of a home world cup in 2026, I think that that's, that's a letdown. That's a bummer. That's a failure with uh, the growth of soccer in our nation and um, the talent, you know, obviously Pulisic, uh, Weston McKinney, you have, you have some really, really great players. Gio Reyna um, is doing some really good stuff. So the talent is there. I think the coaching staff is there and, and our country is ready for it. So, yeah, I think that's a great question. I think you're seeing uh, a little bit of a leveling out. Um, and on the women's side, unfortunately, it's the rest of the world catching up. 
And on the men's side, uh, it's them catching up and kind of now being in the conversation of, of at least like the top, top 10, top. And if you're going to say quarterfinals, you got to say top eight, right? So uh, I, I like to shoot for that. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how it unravels.